Hi everyone, welcome to Anti-Hero Film Festival. We are so glad that you are watching. Um, my name is Clarice. I am a junior creative writer at Denver School of the Arts, and I'm here with my wonderful collaborator, Soa. Hi everyone, I'm Soa. I'm also a junior at Denver School of the Arts, but I go there for video cinema arts. We're so glad that you're watching. And to kick off the evening, I thought I would just give a brief little overview of kind of our inspiration behind choosing the anti-hero as the figurehead for our film festival. Um, and Soa and I really thought the anti-hero encapsulated what we wanted this film festival to be because the anti-hero is often spoken for, spoken over, and silenced. And so with this film festival, we really wanted to uplift those voices that have been silenced and have been historically erased. And so this is a celebration of those that are not usually celebrated. So what is going to happen tonight is we are obviously going to watch all of the films, but you will also get to hear what the filmmakers have to say about their work at the end of each film. Um, you'll also see a short little artist bio before watching each film, and at the end, we will be awarding wonderful awards out to the filmmakers who submitted, and that will be the conclusion of our night. So, again, we are so excited that you are here. We hope that you enjoy, and we will see you very soon. Your mother speaking, baby Zoe or Ezekiel, whatever name we come up with. What? Well, this is your baby book. Can we redo that? You didn't start coming out, did you? Better not lose this camera. Hi, my name is Ezekiel Levi. I am 14 years old. Is 12 years ago, I was a baby. Um, is that it? Well, what hand do you write with? Oh, um, same as last year, my left. No, I, I write with my right. I don't know where that came from, sorry. Uh, and what year is it? Um, it is 2018. And your birthday's coming up. Oh, this is the only question I like out of this thing. Um, I'm on a hoverboard. And what's your favorite color? <laughs> um, You can't claim coins that are already on the ground. <laughs> I, sorry, um, what? 
Mom, if I was a girl, what would I have been named? Like, if... if Zoe, 15, green, right-handed. Can you move your head into the light? I don't know, it's not that big of a deal, but there was this coin on the ground and um, I went to go pick it up and there was this other guy who took issue with the fact that I went to go pick it up. So I told him that it, it was a coin on the ground and that it's, you don't have claim to it, and even if you did, you've surely had enough time to spend it by now. You could have spent it in an arcade, bought a candy bar, I, I don't, it's 25 cents. But, but no, you've used it to taunt me. So, now I have it. What's the issue? Some change of heart? I have no shame. Amazing! So up next we have Baby Book by Avi and Juliet. Avi and Juliet are both juniors at Denver School of the Arts and they go there for theater. And they say that they want to bring up the true form of self and um, all the work that they do. But this is actually their first year experimenting with filmmaking. So super exciting stuff and I'm so excited to get to talk to them today. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Amazing. So can you start off by telling us a bit more about your filming process and how you came up with the idea as a whole? So thank you so much for asking. I'd love to answer this question. Basically, when I read the prompt, I knew that I would. it would be an awesome thing to do with Avi. And as soon as I read it, I knew that Avi and I had one thing in common, and that was religion. And that went great with the prompt. So as far as our filming process went, as soon as we established what we wanted our common theme to be among the whole thing, like I said, religion, we talked about um, moments in our life that were personal to us regarding the topic. And then Avi, um, took care of the writing and asked me about my experience, which we collaborated on as far as writing in our personal experiences. And then Avi did like the transition work and stuff like that. And then as far as COVID safety went, it was a big goal of ours to keep with guidelines. So we filmed at my house just using, um, my mom was in the movie and then <laughs> it was just me and Avi. And then as far as scenes go with other people we liked we wanted to do something with subtitles to show that really the moments were centered around us and how it affected us rather than the people saying the words to us i also appreciated like the motif in the torah about the the father the and the two sons and because this was very specific and very different but um i wanted it to focus on just the three characters so originally we did film to have um someone else in it and being part of the dialogue we had but then we just felt it, it, it didn't feel right um so we ended up making a few cuts and making things really centered around these um three individuals Yes, and that brings me to my question. Um, so in your artist statement, you talked about how this film is a reaction against all the widespread anti-Semitism that we're seeing in this day and age. And obviously the people in the films are, are you. Um, but I would love to hear more about the experiences that kind of influenced this film and how you came up with that, um, the tones of religion for the film. So, we played with the idea of uh, like there being two different types of the way people view Jewish people. I mean, there's so many more, but like personally for us. And so we thought that like with Avi, for example, it was 
by name. And by name, you could understand that he was Jewish. And for me, it was by more so facial structure and um, my features that were typically known for being Jewish features. And then we played with how that affects the way people view us and how that affects the way people uh, treat us. So when it came to writing down those experiences, we thought of very specific ones that corresponded to uh, those similarities and differences. And we wrote down um, things that we'd experienced firsthand that maybe weren't obviously anti-Semitic for them, but it was be it wouldn't have happened if we weren't Jewish. So, yeah. Yeah, to add on to that, um, we kind of highlighted on the luck of it all like how Juliet ended up with uh, the stereotypical Jewish nose, and now I ended up with a very Jewish name. Now these things are completely out of our control, and yet we are put into these boxes where we're considered to be Jewish just by first glance for Juliet, and just by in attendance saying my name. I mean, um, it's pretty obvious. And through the two different stories we tell, um, and through the motif of the coin flipping, um, we kind of explore and highlight how much, uh, how much of this is luck and how much, how this is really out of our control and um, people shouldn't be oppressed um, just off of stereotypes or well, oppressed period, but yeah. That's super powerful. Thank you so much for touching on that. And it's definitely apparent in your film how much um, power and how much vulnerability was put into that so thank you um i wanted to ask about the title of your film and how um you were brainstorming that how that came up i'd love to hear more about that yeah so um not gonna sugarcoat this one um well we had so many different options um and this was kind of a last option um our yeah this was was our last option um but we had these we had these flamboyant titles that were that were tongue in cheek, and it, it, it just didn't it didn't feel right. So we just we um, uh, we decided to land on Baby Book because that's what it was. That was the original. Um, that's that's that was the original idea. When I introduced it to Juliet, I said, "Okay, it's going to be just this virtual Baby Book." Um, so just keeping it simple, um, and I think there's so much um, we we aim to have so much symbolism within the um, within the movie um, that we thought that keeping things simple with the title would be would be kind of helpful um, and yeah. Super clever, yes. Thank you for that. Um, and just to end this little interview soiree, I would love um, to hear your opinions on how your film really connects to the anti-hero trope. Um, and so when we were creating this film festival, Soa and I just were really drawn to the anti-hero because there's someone who's been marginalized, who's been written out of history, who's not been celebrated in, as their full selves. Um, and so having that, I would love to hear your take on the anti-hero and how it's embodied in Baby Bug. Okay, well, so growing up, I mean, you don't see tons of children's films or anything like that about just the typical Jewish experience, unless it's about, you know, the Holocaust or like these awful events that Jewish people have faced. So, you know, we wanted to touch on on the awful parts of it as well, but without making it this like horrifically tragic moment in history per se. And um, as well, like, I don't know, like watching Barbie movies growing up and now seeing all those things about like how so many characters are depicted, like the bad guys are, have all these stereotypical Jewish tropes. It's like, they aren't seen typically as awesome or they're either the villain or they're being beaten down. It's never just living. So yeah, Avi, if you'd like to speak more. No, I think you completely hit it on the dot there. I think 
Um, just highlighting on these microaggressions is really important because you see all these, you learn about the Holocaust um, and you learn about all this um, Jewish scapegoating that has happened in the past, but you really, um, there's not a lot of things in history books or in school that really teaches you about how these, um, these patterns of oppression are still affecting um, Jewish populations today. And through highlighting on um, two different stories that we both had, um, two different realities of a Jewish person um, who is often the antagonist in stories um, is something that felt um, felt appropriate for the um, anti-hero prompt. Well, thank you both so much. That was so insightful and we're so thankful to have your film and anti-hero and to be able to talk with you both. So thank you both. Thank you <laughs> for your thank time. You so much. Love this. Hi everyone, um, we are introducing Sam's film, Euphoria 2. Sam is a senior at Monarch High School and he has been filmmaking for six and a half years. And he says that most of his films explore people, both their relationships to themselves and their relationships to each other. We are so excited to be interviewing Sam today. Hello. Hi Sam, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, and so, We'll just jump right in and we would love to hear more about your filming process and really how you came up with the idea for Euphoria 2. So uh, basically this past, I don't remember what month it was in 2020 because they all just kind of blended together, but I stumbled onto uh, Euphoria on HBO. What they did really spoke to me uh, just regarding what I'm fascinated with i mean it's just like a beautiful show if you've seen it like i they deserve every award ever for what they did you know in terms of the production it was just like magic i got all of the talent to agree to do it and i got my crew to agree to do it and i got um some equipment from a friend and you know basically like put everything together in my garage that next morning and we just you know started shooting and we just spent i think a good 12 hours just kind of playing around with different things and lights and we kind of you know cued them i really want to give everyone who i know has like something to say even if it's like half a sentence i just want to give them a chance to say it or um you know be there and look pretty in front of the cameras you know so maybe it just makes their day a little bit better when they see it Amazing. So Sam, we were hoping, kind of on the same topic, that you could expand and talk more about the people in the film and why you chose them and how their experiences are similar or different to yours and if you could expand more on like the stories that they have to tell. Everyone who is working on the project is someone who I am interested in because they, at least to me, um, like they're doing something or they're trying to do something and I think it matters. Yes, so much goodness in what you just said. Um, and I guess kind of talking about that more, it seems like both since you drew so much inspiration from Euphoria, this the show and just kind of what it means to be a teen in this era, I'd love to hear more about 
how your film um, kind of connects to the ways that you interact with the world and how it kind of represents some of those coming of age notions that you just touched on. Where it's kind of, it's just about paying attention and kind of showcasing the beauty that is all around us. Those things that are uncommon um, that I think make people interesting. That was wonderful, Sam. And kind of finally tying in, um, when we came up with Antihero, we came up with this like idea of the underdog and how a lot of times people, a part of marginalized groups, are um, in this environment where they can rise up with confidence and uh, in who they are and in what they do. A lot of what you just talked about, which was wonderful. Um, but I was hoping you could touch a little bit more on how the anti-hero trope or like the idea of the anti-hero is intertwined into your film or how it relates to it. All of them are kind and friendly and you know wonderful people and you just have to take a second to cut through all of the noise you know what you hear about them what they look like um how they identify how they don't identify what are their beliefs and actually talk to them and interact with them so they're just doing whatever it is that they try to do that was such a powerful point to end on sam thank you so much um and as we conclude this interview is there anything else that you want to say yeah, I just really want to, uh, I want to thank all of the people who work with me on this. I want to thank my family. I want to thank my hair and makeup artist, Maggie Wilkerson, who is so talented. Um, my production assistants, Ruby Cervantes and Amy Jo James. Uh, and the talent, Georgia Barber, Amelia Kruger, uh, Matisse Kellner, and Kate Muldoon. Um, with like a little clip of Amy Joy in there while we were doing a camera test. But it's... All of these people helped bring this together. I couldn't have done it without any of them. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Bell family for providing um, a large portion of the equipment and uh, Five Toll Productions. And just like a huge shout out to Sam Levinson for creating Euphoria, which inspired this whole thing. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to us about your film. Sure, sure, uh, sure thing. If a white person is prejudiced towards me, there is kind of a society built behind them that can help foster that hate. It kind of irritated me because when it was in third grade, like reflecting back on it, I thought, oh, well, we were all little. We didn't know what if that was offensive or anything. But now that we're like getting older and we're all turning teenagers and we're all really we already know about what to say and what not to say. I feel like it's not acceptable. April 19th, 1996, um, the second year anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. Um, that Monday, this was actually a Friday, that Monday is kind of the catalyst to what happened. I was walking home um, from class, leaving campus, and three uh, individuals in a truck drove by, screamed out, nigger this, and they kept driving. Um, I was pissed. I ran out in the street and kind of tried to challenge them to come back as best I could, screaming and hollering. Um, they didn't come back. We were learning about the Romans in that class, and a girl asked if it was okay to refer to them as gypsies, and my teacher had said that that might be offensive, and another girl raised her hand and said, well, I know some people who are actually from Rome who refer to themselves as gypsies, and if that's okay to call them that, and my teacher had said that you shouldn't call people that because if they take the racial slur back, then that's theirs to keep, but other races shouldn't say it. And she gave an example, which was white people in the N-word, to which a boy turned to me and he was like, I don't care, you're still an N-word. We were fed up with it. We were like, if you're going to use those words, stop. Come to us and use those words. So I wanted to throw a protest. Um, I talked to all of the individuals on campus that I could. Um, about it, 
not too many people wanted to get involved with that. So what I did was I printed up two signs, what is a nigger? I wanted to know, you're, gonna, you're calling us that, what is a nigger? Um, printed those up, went to the, the uh, student center. There's a big plaza there and I put them up. I called the press and just went at it. And I feel like those people are still like trying to incorporate that message today. And some might say that like our president still incorporating those messages. And I feel like he might be destroying what progress we have made to like tie like, I don't know, to make allies with other races or to like be okay with who you are. My mom had this saying that says, don't leave until you're ready, okay? Um, another way to deal with racism also is to make individuals feel uncomfortable. During my lifetime, <laughs> time and time again, individuals get on an elevator, people clutch their, ladies have clutched their purse. I've been in stores, people will follow you. So it's a matter of, I like to play a game with them. They clutch their purse, I move forward to them. How you doing? You know, smile at, you know, play with it. Instead of being so serious when it's not something that's physical, when it's not something that's actually hurting you. Even if you say an offensive joke to your friend and they laugh at it, you should probably say later that like, oh, I was joking by the way, I hope you didn't take offense to that. Because there's been many instances or like incidents where I've said something offensive and I didn't know it hurt that person and that maybe even if it sounds funny or they laugh at it, it might not be okay to say it all and that you should like really think before you say it. Um, I hope that they can learn about um, understanding. I hope they can learn some positivity. I, like I said, for me it was a negative situation and I actually went at it in a negative way, but I think it turned out very positive. Um, by getting the news to come, by having students talk at, at the student center, we did open up eyes. Um, I was able to then get a editorial that I was able to write for an entire year about issues that black folks faced up at Colorado State and in U the United States. And so I think that, you know, the main thing is that if we, if we know that something's wrong, don't be afraid to step up. It's not going to be comfortable. It might not be easy, but um, you know you definitely need to step up and say something if you feel it's wrong. And that's that's kind of the only way that I think things can change. bring on Marcus X. Stokes. He is a senior at Denver School of the Arts and has been studying and making films for eight years. His films center around African American narratives as well as black excellence and we are so excited to have him here talking to us. So let's bring in Marcus. Whee! <laughs> How's it going on? Good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here, Marcus. We all really enjoyed your film and it was a lot of fun to watch it. Um, so the first question we want to ask you is if you could tell us more about your filming process and how you came up with the initial idea. Yeah, um, I'd say the way that I came up with the initial idea is the story that my dad told me about the events that I ended up filming. Um, he was kind of just telling me that a little bit about I guess what he had to go through in college and a lot of stuff that I guess it tends to be common ground at this point of things that black people go through and I think that that was kind of the main idea but then also just hearing a story from one of my friends that also ended up being in the movie um, and so then I kind of wanted to put those two stories together because I feel like they had they had ties that honestly shouldn't that shouldn't exist. I mean, the, the difference in time period that it happened is um, pretty significant. 
And I think that just showing two uh, different stories that happen almost like years and years apart, but they still have the same undertone and it's crazy to me. So then I kind of thought that I would take those two stories and put them together, but then also um, filming process wise, I guess I kind of just worked on trying to get those stories and trying to figure out the best way to tell them in a short form because of course you could take a long time to tell both of those stories but I had to figure out a way to make it make it work in short form and I think you did a pretty good job. Yeah, totally. Um, thank you for that so much, Marcus. And that really funnels into the second question, um, which you kind of answered this, but we'd love to hear more about who the two people in your film are. I know you mentioned one of them is your dad. Um, and why did you specifically choose those two people? And how are their experiences both like similar and different to your own experiences? Right. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously one of them is my dad. And I guess the main reason is because we deal with a lot of the same things. And I just decided that it was kind of important to see how similar it was and kind of how it really shouldn't be. I mean, the fact that, you know, one, his story and a lot of things that have happened to him those were like in the 80s and the 90s and then still happen today and I think that that's just a little bit insane that we're still dealing with those same issues but it's not like it was new then or it was anything different then it was still going on and then Trinity is one of my friends um I guess we we started talking and started hanging out a long time ago and I guess it was like I said it's the same thing I'm just trying to trying to convey how a lot hasn't really changed. It just has kind of changed form. And yeah, they they both are going through the same things that I'm going through and the same things that a lot of people are going through. It's not like us three are just, you know, a separate entity from everybody else. This is going on all the time and it always has been. And I kind of feel like just, um, I just like to call action and just, you know, um, tell stories like that because it's very important to me that these things get changed and I think that that's kind of the main reason that I got into making films because I wanted to be able to show those types of things and yeah. That is super powerful and I love you Yeah, thank you for just sharing that and, and being really nice to that. Um, I was hoping that you could talk more about how, and this kind of ties into what you're already talking about, how it links your film, making links to your identity and um, the connections and communities that you're part of. I'd also love to hear more about your mentors and influences, as well as how you think your filmmaking will project in the future. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, I guess when it comes to how my filmmaking is tied into my identity, I think that that's just a lot of what I want to do is be able to tell black stories and be able to tell stories about people that are misrepresented. And I think there's a little bit more to it than most people think. A lot of people think it just has to be a lot of stuff about uh, the racism that we all deal with and, you know, all of those struggles. But I, I don't want it to just be that. I don't want it, you know, when people think of movies for black people, I don't want them to think of, oh, it has to be something about race or anything. I want it to just be centered around black excellence and just how I think that a lot of it, it tends to get bogged down to this one category and it doesn't have to be like that. And I think that that's something that I want to help kind of steer in a different direction because yes, those stories need to be told, but at the same time, there's a whole other side to it that I don't think a lot of people touch on. Um, when it comes to influences, I'd have to say uh, my mom and my dad, they, they taught me a lot of this stuff. Um, my mom really taught me how to, you know, guide yourself through all the life through all the life stuff that's gonna happen, you know, all the hardships. And then my dad, he really he really got me going on the um just the persistence and working hard. Um I'd say especially when it comes to the art. Um there's I don't know anybody with more um with more heart. Like he worked so hard towards his art and I think that that's something that I kinda wanted to emulate, you know, because it's it's a constant it's a constant thing. Um and then, of course, there's some, like, uh, big-time directors that I really, really enjoy. Spike Lee, um, Elizabeth Renee, 
love both of their movies. Um, I wish, I, or not, I wish. In the future, I will be, I will be somewhat like them. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just have a lot of influences from there, and then some influences from musicians even that um, that I think really kind of drive what I try to do. So, yeah. Fabulous. Thank you for that, Marcus. That was really profound. Um, and this kind of, again, funnels into the next question that we wanted to ask you. Um, so I guess I just wanted to give some context. I know you're a film major at DSA, so you know what the anti-hero trope is. But kind of with this film festival, we were really wanting to highlight the voices of people who've been spoken over and spoken for and silenced. Um, so that's like marginalized people and people who don't fit into this dominant culture. And so we're really wanting to embrace these voices as the anti-hero and really uplift them. Um, and so having that, I'd love to hear in what ways do you feel like the anti-hero trope really relates to your film and its creation? Um, I think that the whole anti-hero, um, I guess, style really does fit to um, my movie and then kind of actually all of my movies and including the ones that I'm working on right now because they always have kind of a little a little bit of an outsider type feel. Um, a lot of the times when I'm making movies, I always struggle with how I want them to look like the Hollywood style, but then there's also a style that I really like and I think it's a little bit more... Um, I guess a little bit more unorthodox and a little bit more um, towards a way that a lot of people don't really like or recognize as something that can actually work. And I think that that kind of just fits into that movie specifically because it has an entirely different style than, say, you know, a really polished um, Hollywood movie or like a really polished student film. It's kind of like a almost gritty type of style. And that's kind of what I really like to do with my movies. Um, yeah, I think that that's kind of how it fits into that whole. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, that's kind of all of the questions that we have written down. Um, but is there anything else that like you wanted to say about your film or anything that we didn't ask you that you'd like to talk more about? Um, I guess just the, the last thing I have to say is that um, this is, um, I think that that movie right there was, um, it was really important for just how I'm passing as a filmmaker. I think that I look at that a lot of times as a movie that I'm, I'm proud of, but also of course there's a lot of things that I could fix in it. And I think that slowly and slowly I'm getting better because I've had um, three projects since that one. And I think that it was every single time I'm getting a little bit better. So I think just looking back on it, I'm really proud of what I did in that one and I'm really proud of where I'm going. That's awesome, Marcus. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Um, I'm really excited to have you in the film festival and to have people hear what you just told, like the amazing things you just told us. So, yeah. Thank you. I'm excited to be here as well. Cosa ha significato diventare maggiorenne per me? Beh, responsabilità. Non sei più protetto dalla semplicità dell'incoscienza propria dei bambini e quindi non puoi più permetterti di essere sincero al 100%. La parola maturità non è semplice da descrivere in quanto comprende in sé un'ampia varietà di significati. Se dovessi descriverla direi incertezza. La consapevolezza e paura di dover affrontare tutte le difficoltà che fino a quel momento altri hanno risolto per te. The first time I found my eyes sticking to the faces, the foreheads, the chins of others who held more feminine features than I, deemed more appealing to gaze at, I was merely a child with eight years in my flower jean pockets. The last time I found myself caught in this structured podium was just a minute ago. A minute ago in which bodies 
floated around headless, our curves scrutinized by chauvinistic hands, hungry for what she never gave to him at home. But I guess he asked nicely, right? Be polite, or risk the chance of being shunned by the very people who deemed you an object in the first place. Se potessi tornare indietro nel tempo e darmi un consiglio, probabilmente mi direi di non prendermi così sul serio. Purtroppo nessuno mi ha mai dato consigli come su diventare donna. Ho dovuto impararlo da sola. D'altronde in collegio non era molto semplice trovare facilmente un, una mano tesa per aiutarti e consigliarti su come meglio affrontare la vita. Dovevi trovare le soluzioni da sola, sbagliando ed imparando da quegli stessi errori, giorno dopo giorno, un passo alla volta. L'essere cresciuta in Medio Oriente, un ambiente molto diverso da quello europeo, non ha di certo semplificato la cosa. Certamente però mi ha dato la forza e il carattere per affrontare molte situazioni e creare un'indipendenza tutta mia. just as how our mothers have cradled us for centuries, their maternal touch acting as a guiding star for our gleaming eyes to stick to, just like how they stuck to the faces of our fellow bloomers. We have discovered ourselves, and that is one of many. Our next film um, is by the wonderful Gaia, and she is a senior at Denver School of the Arts and has been making films for the past four years. And she says that most of the films that she makes draw on her own personal life experiences. So welcome, Gaia. Um, we are so excited to be talking with you. Hello, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And as we jump into this little interview soiree, I would love to hear more about your filming process and how you came up with it with the idea um, behind The Age of Women. Um, so the idea came very spontaneously. I was um, sitting with my best friend and trying to kind of like bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, but they were all like not very good so i didn't uh, really have any luck with any of that and then just randomly i had this idea for like a very feminine based concept um because i like had just been i guess digging deeper into my own experiences um as a woman i guess um and the whole idea of coming of age kind of gives me like a specific vibe so i was just kind of like going through the motions of that and then the process kind of came after um and diving deeper into like a complex like root of all of it you know like um like I said I have this kind of um digging into my own experiences and like taking from that a little bit I feel like I was doing that mainly with this project so that was my whole process that sounds amazing and definitely prevalent throughout your film. 
Um, speaking of, <laughs> throughout your film, you use an intermingling of Italian and English, and we were hoping that you could talk more about the inspiration behind that and the stories that were told in the different languages as well. Right. Um, so my whole like thing was to kind of have it feel very like present to how I was feeling at the time. So like, it, you know, like being Italian myself, um, I feel like there's already some kind of like level of, um, you know, like coming of age in Italy is different from here. So I was just kind of like pulling from both of those. I made my, I gave my mom the um, idea of doing a monologue for her because I wanted her input as an Italian woman as well. Um, and just considering that I wouldn't be in the film myself, I figured it would be a good like, um, almost uh, implication of how it is for me just because I'm her daughter and like that kind of dynamic um, and then obviously like my friends and like the people that are in the film they're all in like a circle like my circle somewhat that have like experienced the same things that I've been experiencing here in America so it's just kind of like again like pulling from like different places and and the things that I um experienced and the things that my mom has experienced which are very similar to me so it just kind of like again balanced out in a way um I also just wanted to like connect something back to my roots in some way like it's not even it's not even specifically for that but it's also because um my grandparents are always jealous that they can't understand my films so I just um I just mainly did the Italian part for them as well because it's just you know it's helpful in general yeah thank you that was so beautiful and profound um and you kind of just touched on this you mentioned that your mom is a large part of the film um but who are some of the other people that you included in the film um and why did you choose them in particular and how are their experiences um similar and different to your own um well i feel like there was it was kind of like a in the project it was kind of very visually based in a lot of ways um one of my really close friends jewel she did a poem for um the film so like already there there was some kind of like artistic expression from one of my friends so like um i don't know like the whole poem idea kind of came also spontaneously but she's such a beautiful writer so we were like why not include her as well um and i think she puts it very well like in general like i feel like when i when i showed most of the people who were in the film the poem they were all like yep this is this is good like this is i don't know a universal feeling in some ways um and so like when she performed the poem it felt very um just like prevalent and so we just kind of had like the same kind of feeling all throughout especially with like um the energy when i was filming and stuff like that so yeah i think it was just kind of it was different but all very like mutually the same you know so amazing and finally we just wanted to tie the like theme of the anti-hero back to um our conversation and back to your film so in what ways do you think that the anti-hero trope like this sort of um character that's been undermined throughout history and is kind of making a comeback in their own way is shown throughout your film well um i don't really know like i don't really know if if like my my vision for the film was to highlight like the i guess negative things coming up and like becoming positive i feel like maybe like that's a misinterpretation of like the anti-hero like thing but like if you if you watch the film and you think about like how i tried to put it together i feel like i tried to highlight more of like the positive more like feminine you know encapsulating all of that like energy that i was just trying to like put out in general um and i feel like i guess the anti-hero like thing comes in in like a way that um in a way that it's very like prevalent to me and like how it is for me growing up so i guess it's just kind of like 
I, I don't know, like, <laughs> there's, like, a feeling of just general, like, coming of age and growing up in that whole, like, you know, fear and, like, the the beauty and the, the craziness of growing up and all that stuff. I feel like that was, like, the main thing that I guess you could, like, link to the anti-hero world I, I you know like there's just like a bunch of different very complex things that i didn't even touch on so there's like um you know again very universal very kind of broad spectrum and i just kind of like hope that it kind of you know talked to somebody it spoke to anybody and that's the some kind of relatable like relatable aspect to it and like that kind of thing yeah yeah um and kind of building off of that something that you do um i'll start that again one way that you described your film um was that how life as an expat has shaped femininity in your life and your mother's life and that just really stuck out to me um because kind of part of the anti-hero too is all of these experiences that are so different from dominant culture and what's normal i mean we know normal's an illusion but I would love if you could explain more, if you felt so inclined, um, how like the experiences of being an expat and living, being Italian but not living in Italy, um, you've kind of touched on that, but have really shaped your perceptions of the anti-hero um, and how you're embracing that in your film. Um, I mean, I feel like I mean, it's kind of a loaded question, so I guess, like, not to, like, rant, but, like, there's, I feel like, a lot that is different for everybody who's lived outside of their home, you know? Like, I'm in the process of going back soon to Italy, so there's, like, a feeling of um, almost returning home in that sense, because it's kind of like a, it's like the first time that I've been doing, I've done that in my life, so, you know, it's kind of a very, like, whirlwind, whirlwind experience, but, um, I don't know, just kind of like being somebody who's who's moved a lot in my life and experienced different, again, normalcies and like different um, uh, things and, and uh, uh, expectations for women all throughout the places I've lived. I feel like there's something to be said about like how it's different in different cultures. Um, in my mom's monologue in The Age of Women, I um i asked her to like kind of touch on like whatever she she thought was necessary for her being an expat too because she also grew up as an expat so like i said dynamics the same but like her whole thing talked about how growing up in the middle east is very different from growing up here from growing up in italy from growing up anywhere so it's just in general a different experience and i think like again like that is kind of what i was trying to touch on like the feeling of like how coming of age and the expectations of women growing up in different places vary you know like it's not the same here and i do feel like grateful that i've been able to to experience those kind of normalcies but they're definitely different like no matter how how you view it it's it's just like gonna be different no matter where you are um so yeah i was just kind of like going off of that in general beautiful thank you so much for all of those wonderful insights gaia um is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or anything that we didn't ask you that you want to expand on no i think i'm good <laughs> I, amazing questions i mean really good thanks Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this, Kaya. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and now the moment we've all been waiting for, MCA Denver's Antihero Short Film Festival Awards! <laughs> so starting us off for the night, we have Down the Rabbit Hole Best Experimental Film Award, which goes to Euphoria 2. And the Synergy Best Collaboration Award goes to Baby Book. Flux, the Best Coming of Age Film Award goes to The Age Woman. And the Excellence Best Documentary Award goes to What Is It?
the song. And we just wanted to thank all of the fantastic filmmakers who contributed to tonight's event. We couldn't have done it without your cinematic excellence. We also wanted to thank MCA Denver and Alyssa for making this film festival possible. And I also wanted to thank from the bottom of my heart, the wonderful Soa. And I want to thank the wonderful Clarice. Um, couldn't have done it without you. Love you a lot. Yes, love you a lot. And we also want to thank you, the viewer, for sticking around and supporting Youth Voices and the Antihero. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye.